Our scripture for today is from Matthew 6. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from God in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do, in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners, to be seen by others. But when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body or what you will wear. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet God feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying at a single hour to your life? But seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has trouble enough of its own. The word of God for the people of God. In this series, I've mentioned each week, there's a lot of meat in Matthew. And just for a little bit, in, in these passages, but even beyond, just for a little context, when I served in Riverside, California, there was a Bible study that met every Monday morning, and we just did Bible study, right? Opened up and studied what was there. I didn't do a lot of preparation in advance, and we studied different books of the Bible. And when we studied Matthew and the others, we would read a passage for what it was in its context and then just sort of dig in. And if it went really fast, then we would read another passage and then do that bit, right? And if it was took a long time, then it would just take whatever time it took for us. And we were generally together about an hour, hour and 15 minutes each week. And it took us two years to get through Matthew. Meeting every single week, just sort of poking our way through. There's a lot of meat there. So know that even as much as we touch, we are missing at least that much more. Um, I really do encourage you to go in. This is great, rich teaching from Jesus, and there is a lot for us. Uh, in this morning's passage, what I hear above all else is this. Beware of your ego. Be careful of doing what you do in faith to put on a show. Now, Jesus is also very clearly teaching us about piety, fasting, and praying, and giving. But the message surrounding each of those is check your motives and beware of your ego. Stay in your lane. Do what is faithful for who you are. And don't worry about who's seeing you or praising you for those same actions. Now, Jesus is saying that all of the acts of piety or means of grace, spiritual disciplines, all the same way or different ways of saying the same thing, all of them are important. And he doesn't raise any questions about them. It's not, well, should you be fasting or should you be praying or should you be giving? In each instance, Jesus says, when you do the thing. When you pray, when you fast, uh, when you give, when you serve, he's assuming that is part of the lifeblood of faithfulness. They are a given. And Jesus believes in those practices. And he's sure and very clear that even in doing the right things, we can be wrongheaded. 
Even in doing the right things, we can be wrong-headed. Now, we know that, and it cuts at us, right? Because we want to do the right things, and we want to know that if we did the right thing, that it was right. Not that we did the right thing and somehow got it wrong. And Jesus says you have to be mindful of both. So why is it and how is it that we get it wrong? Well, we're human. Or as I like to say, we're people -y. Right? We do as people do. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all get caught up in our ego. We all get caught up in our relationships. We all got caught up in selfishness and other, other sins, right? Other things that deter us in our relationships. We sometimes struggle. And on the flip side, we want a relationship with God. That's a big part of why we're here, right? We are striving after a relationship with God and not just any old relationship with God. I would venture that most of us want a great relationship relationship with God. Don't we? And we've from time to time seen people with a great relationship with God. And we assume that if they do the right things, that that's how they get the right relationship with God. So we want a right relationship with God. We wouldn't be opposed to being a person with a great relationship with God or a great person, right? We sort of draw those two together. And then sometimes when people think that we're great and they acknowledge that we're great and they tell us that we're great, we don't want to lose that either. Are you with me? So sometimes they see us do something and they tell us, oh, how wonderful you are, how compassionate you are, how generous you are. And we want them to keep saying those things. And sometimes we get caught up doing something just so that we will receive the praise for it. Anybody struggle? All right, full confession. It's been a while now, but it's very much a part of my history. I was a pretty smart student. I could achieve pretty well. I was really good at math from very early on. Um, and, and I didn't really love reading. I could read, I just didn't love it. And I definitely did not love writing. Uh, but I was really good at knowing what to do to get a good grade. I was a really good grade earner, and I was thought of as a really great student, and I sort of took that very proudly, and I worked very hard to continue to get good grades so that people would believe I was a good student. And I did that all the way through high school. I graduated as a co-salutatorian of the class, right? I had achieved well. It wasn't all for naught. But then, when I went to college, uh, where there is a huge enrollment rate, 10,000 students in the freshman class, uh, and... I started meeting people and this was the president of their class and this was the prom queen and that one was homecoming court and this one was also salutatorian and this one was valedictorian and this one had 1600 on their SATs. Uh, everybody was, right? I went from being a big fish in a small pond to being a very small fish in a very, very large pond. And I fell off my pedestal a bit. And I was invited to join the honors program, which most of the students are, and I thought, no, I don't want to do all that work. <laughs> but then I took this class that changed me and taught me how to be a good learner and not just a good grade earner. And I had this wild epiphany moment, which will sound very mundane from the outside, but I learned that if I read the course material and I did the required work, my grade would actually reflect it. I know that's the basis for all of education, but it hadn't been requisite in my elementary and my high school, right? I could do just enough and still get high marks, but I became so consumed with the high marks that I was missing a whole lot of learning. There's a whole bunch of books that are requisite that I didn't ever read. And I think, do I really want to go back and read The Grapes of Wrath? <laughs> Maybe not, but maybe Catcher in the Rye or, you know, maybe some of those others. But I got consumed with being seen as something. And in the process, I missed being the truth of that something. I missed being a good learner for those years. And I missed a number of learning opportunities, not all of them, but a number of them. And so I take that sort of part of who I am. I know that I can be prone to ego, right? And I come to this passage where Jesus says, be careful. Be careful about doing the right things with the wrong intention. 
Be careful about worrying about being known for something when what really matters is the practice and the discipline of doing it because that is what will change your life. It may be that nobody knows how fervently you pray, which matters more, that you're known for the practice or that you're engaged with the practice. It may be that nobody knows how generously you give, but giving generously is what fills your heart. What matters more, your faithful acts or your faithful reputation? Jesus knows I'm not the only one. You all might be exempt, but I'm not the only one who struggles with ego. And he knew that his disciples would struggle with ego. People are going to see you walking alongside me, healing alongside me, helping people, including people, and you're going to think it's all about you. Be careful. As you practice praying and serving and giving and doing and fasting, that you do it for the right reasons. That you aren't worried about what they say about you but that you are consumed with your relationship with God. And I think that message translates to us 2,000 years later. We are called clearly to the doing, to fast and to pray and to serve and to give, to engage in our relationship with God and to engage in our relationships with others. And we aren't supposed to be consumed with the knowing. And I want to offer this point of sort of clarification or just knowledge. We often think, well, I can do these things. I can fast and I can pray and I can give and I can grow my relationship with God. I can attend to my relationship with God anywhere. And those things are true. But not the whole picture. The whole picture includes people. Those messy, sordid, quirky people. Because if I'm going to give, who's the recipient? People. And if I'm going to pray for someone or for something, most often my prayers are about people. And if I'm going to serve, I'm serving people. We can't do our faith relationship in isolation. We can't do it in a box. We can't do it without having to deal with all of the others. We can only truly engage in the faith relationship that Jesus teaches by engaging with one another. For better and for worse, through the ups and downs. And we are called to do it in a way that is authentic and true and earnest. Not so that we're popular, not so that we're known for it, not so that we're held in high esteem, but simply so that we might grow in our relationship with God. This is part of the, the Sermon on the Mount, but it'll sort of be a good little preface to our series on the disciplines. As we invite you to different practices, engaging in the spiritual disciplines, remember they're not for everybody else to know. How many days you fast or how many things you give up or how much you give or how long you pray or how eloquent you are. They are indeed meant to enrich your relationship with God to help you grow as a disciple of Jesus. Jesus knows we struggle because we want to be known. We want to be respected. We want to be loved. And none of those things are wrongheaded. As long as we are being known and respected and loved for the right reasons. Not because we put on a good show, but because we are earnestly invested in our relationship with Christ. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the teachings of Jesus, for the ways that they challenge us to be faithful to him, devoted to him, and to you. We admit that sometimes we struggle. Sometimes we struggle with a lack of desire or initiative. Sometimes we do struggle with ego or pride or selfishness. Sometimes we struggle with each other. As you call us to these practices, you also call us to relationship. And we can be difficult. 
for each of these challenges, we ask for your grace, that you would pour out your support and your creativity and your faithfulness and your determination so that we might be fully devoted to you, so that we could see the natural cause and effect, practicing the disciplines, and in, in turn receiving a deeper relationship with you and those around us. Shine your light upon our paths. Help us to grow as we seek to be true disciples of the risen Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. As you go forth from this place, may you be encouraged in your faith practices. May you be receptive to the ways that God might grow you. May you be encouraged to ignore what others might say or think or believe, and simply focus on dedicated relationship with God. May you go in peace and the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.